Okay, welcome back. Let's go ahead and tag the areas. And before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and adjust the kitchen slightly. What I mean by that is we're gonna create a small entranceway over here so that there is not gonna be really a door into the kitchen. It's just gonna be like you can walk into the kitchen and then we're gonna lower this wall to about four feet or so. So you'll be able to look across the countertop that we're gonna place over here and see directly into the kitchen. So what I'd like you to do is select this wall over here and if you notice the wall goes from this end all the way over to that end and there's no real divide in between any of the parts so what we're going to have to do is add in a divide so with the wall selected i want you to go over to this tool over here this is called the split element and if i click on that then go over to the center of this wall like right over there and i click over here what it's going to do is it's going to slice these two wall elements so that they're now separated. So if I press escape twice and I hover over the wall, you'll notice that now I can just select this portion of the wall. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to separate it by grabbing on this circle over here and I'm going to push it probably about three feet or so. Uh, let's actually get an extra foot in there. So I'm going to take this to about nine and I'm going to let it go. So if I zoom out, now I have an entranceway that isn't uh, separated with any kind of door. However, we got a problem. This wall is still at 10 feet because all the walls in our house are set to 10 feet. And I wanna adjust it, but right now I can't adjust the unconnected height because it's like kind of locked in there, it's fixed in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a top offset of negative six feet which is going to push our, ha our, our wall down. So I can do it over here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in the 3D view so you can kind of get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So what I'd like you to do is go over to this button over here, the default 3D view, and I want you to click on that. Once you've done that, you're going to notice that we can see a full isometric of our house. Yours might be a little off depending on how you built it, but we're going to move around and those translate things, the click in the middle mouse wheel and hold it in and then move left and right still works. The zoom in and out also still works. And if you hold down the shift key, hold down the shift key and click in the middle scroll wheel of the mouse and hold it in. So I'm holding in the middle scroll wheel of the mouse and then I move the mouse. I'll be able to rotate it freely so that I'm able to see into the kitchen. So you can kind of see what I'm gonna do there. So just click in the middle scroll wheel, move it, zoom in, and you wanna kind of practice with that so that you feel comfortable kind of moving around in 3D space. Okay, but this wall over here, I'm gonna select it, and I can also move this arrow down, but instead for the top offset, I'm gonna change it to negative six feet. So to write that, it's negative six space zero. And if you write it like that, Revit will under, automatically understand that the first number is feet and the second number is inches. And if I press apply, you'll notice that it lowered the wall right away and it lowered it down so that when I select it, the unconnected height is now four because I su subtracted six feet from it. And now it's in place so that if I walk in the main entranceway, I can see directly into the kitchen. So that's looking pretty good. I want to head back to my level one floor plan. So over in the properties where it says level one, I want you to double click back on that. And now you're back in the level one floor plan. And while we can add in the labels on this view, it's usually a good idea to create a separate view for the room labels. So where it says level one on your floor plans, I want you to right click on that, go to duplicate view, duplicate, click on that and it will create a level one copy one over here in your floor plans. Right click on that, go to rename and call this room labels and press okay. So now we've created a separate floor plan that is just gonna contain the labels of our room. To add in a label, you wanna make sure you're on the architecture tab and that you have these options available to you. The main one is room. If I click on room, and I hover over a closed space like this room over here, you'll notice it allows me to tag it. Also notice that I'm in the room labels right now. So if you are still in label, level one, 
make sure you're actually in room labels before you start doing this. But I'm going to go over here and add in a room, add in a room, so on and so forth. Let's go into each of the closed spaces and adding a room label. And where we run into a problem is for the kitchen. So I want to tag the kitchen, but when I try to, the room label is extending past the walls. And that's because this gap over here, Revit automatically thinks that this is all a room in its entirety, when in fact this small portion here is the room. So what we're going to do is I'm going to press escape twice to exit that and go to the option that says room separator. I'm going to click on room separator and this is just going to allow me to draw a line to separate the room. It's going to be invisible from the end result of the project, but it's going to allow us to tag the room correctly. So over here where the doorway would start, I'm just going to click and draw a line out to the other wall and then click there. So that line is going to act as an invisible wall and allow this room to be separated. Let's also add one for our living area space. So this area over here. So we're going to go to room separator and starting from this wall, I'm going to go down with a line and click over there so that this area here will be our living space. And then we will just ignore the hallway space. Although if we wanted to, we could tag this space as well. So I'm going to go to room, hover down into this open space, click it down once and it should drop it. And then finally into this last room. So we've added in all the labels into our project. So now that we have the labels in place, let's go ahead and add some descriptors so that they are more distinguishable and not just called all of them room and then the numbers. So to change the word, that's pretty straightforward. You just need to double click on it and then you're allowed to rename it. So that will be the kitchen. This here will be laundry, bathroom, be bedroom three, bedroom two, this will be a bathroom, bedroom one, and living space, like that. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and get a little bit more meaningful information. So I'm going to select one of these. So I'll just select the kitchen option. Just click it once with the left click to do that. And over in the properties where it says room tag, I'm going to adjust that to room tag with area. So I'm going to click that and you'll notice that it also creates a label on it. So room tag with area now has a label and I probably should have done that for all of them. So I'm going to try to hold down the control key and select all of them simultaneously. Go here and go room tag with area. So it's added the area. And that gives us a little bit more information about our house, but it'd also be really nice if we knew the room size. So the dimensions of the room in feet. So to do that, what we're going to do is I'm going to double click on one of the rooms. So kitchen seven or whatever you have, I'm going to double click on that and it's going to open up the editor. Okay, so that's my room name, the weird number that I have, and then like this over here. So the word volume is kind of in the way. Uh, I can kind of move that so you can see it. And I'm just going to press the delete key on the keyboard to get rid of that. We don't really need it, so now it looks a little bit more cleaner. Now the room number itself, we're going to get rid of that also. So what I'd like you to do is double click on that, or just click on it once actually. And there's an option here called Edit Label. So I want you to click Edit Label. And it opens up this. And like I said, what we need is the width and the length of the room. So we can put the dimensions in and then hopefully have those. But unfortunately, we don't have a width and a length option over here. So all this stuff isn't really relevant to what we need. So we're going to have to create some equations that will do that for us. So where it says number, I want you to select that first. So see where my mouse is. I clicked on that one and I'm going to return it. So I'm going to remove the parameter from label, click on that and it's gone. Then I'm going to go to the equation FX. I'm going to click on that and we're going to create two, two labels. So the first one's going to be room length 
and I'm just going to write RL for room length. And I've written down the equations over here. So room length is the perim perimeter divided by 2 minus the square root of perimeter divided by 2 to, to the second, or squared, minus 4 times the area divided by 2. It doesn't really matter if you understand that equation or not. Feel free to break it down later. But what I want you to do is write down this portion into this formula box. And I'm actually probably going to put a copy of this in the uh, video notes so you can actually just download this. But this is the portion you want. So I'm going to just go ahead, right click, copy that. And over here for my formula, I'm going to right click and paste that in. Then I'm going to go over to where it says number. And I'm going to actually think it might be a number, so I'm going to press OK and see if that works. So if it says inconsistent units, that just means the type of unit is wrong. So I, it might be a length, so I'm going to set it to length, press, press OK, and it worked. So now, if I press OK, just for show, you'll see that it has RL here, because that was the name of the units. And I could also press load into project. And when I do that, it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite the existing version. If I do click on that, you'll notice that now it has the room length of each of the rooms. Now it's not in the cleanest format, but it does work. So I'm going to go back to it now. So I'm going to double click on here and we're going to add a little bit more info to here. So I'm going to go load into project. Whoops, I, my bad. I'm going to double click back here. I'm going to click on this once and then I'm going to go to edit label. And that was the room length. Let's add an equation for the room width. So I'm going to go to fx. This is going to be room width. And then the formula is going to be the area divided by the room length, except that I called the room length RL. So that's the real equation. So I'm going to select that. And I'm going to right click, copy it, go over here to the formula. And I'm going to right click and paste it. Switch my type to length. And then press OK. So that's my room width. And if I press OK, You'll see it says RL and then RW. But usually when you're doing a dimensions, you have like an X between the two. So let's go ahead and add in that X. I'm going to go to Edit Label. I'm going to add in a new equation, FX. The name is just going to be X. It's going to be a text. So I'm going to select text. And the formula is just going to be a quotation mark, X, and then a quotation, like that. And then I'm going to press OK. So we got an X here. It needs to be between these two. So if it's selected, I could move it up using this move parameter up option. And now it's between that, RL, X, RW. I'm going to press OK. That looks pretty good. I'm going to press load into project, overwrite the existing versions, click on that. And now you see that it's added it in there. But now it's a, now it's a very big mess. So. The numbers are everywhere. It's very difficult to read. Uh, so we need to clean this up a little bit more. So one last time, I'm going to double click on this, go back to here. And the first thing I'm going to do is click on this RL times the RW. And I'm going to stretch this box out, OK? Stretch it out so that it takes up a lot more space. I'm going to switch the location of this RW box over to the other box here. So let me actually move this down a hair more. I'm going to take the square feet, I'm going to move it up here. And then I'm going to move this one back over roughly there. And I can adjust this as I see fit. I might move this one down just a hair also. And for the RL times RW, I'm going to select that. And I'm going to go Edit Label. And I'm going to click on RL first. And there's an option here that has like a little hand and a little uh, hashtag symbol. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to turn off the use project settings. And I'm going to have this round. If you want a very clean look, you could have it round to the nearest foot, although you might be a little off. Or you could round to the nearest six inches. For this project's sake, I'm just going to round to the nearest foot. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to go to RW, little hashtag symbol again. Turn off use project settings. Once again, round to the nearest foot, press OK, OK, and then this looks pretty good. So I'm going to go load into project and then overwrite the existing version. Yes. And then boom, that's what I got so far. So it's looking pretty clean. 
I think what I should do is push down the square foot a little bit lower so it fits into this box, and then the dimensions of the room. Uh, because this box here, we cannot get rid of it. So something has to go in that box, and usually I put that square footage in there. So I'm going to double click it one more time. So this, I'm going to lower it down just a hair. This also, I'm going to lower it down like there. And then I'm going to load that into the project, override it, and that looks okay. You know, we could push the, the words down a little bit more, but now that we have that all set, we can just adjust it so each of these fits into the rooms accordingly. And you'll notice that the dimensions are all in feet. It's a nice, clean look. So we, we get a lot of information from these labels, not just the name of the room. OK, so there you go. That is the room labels. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.